Tuesday of the other June, based on the short story by Norma Fox Mazur. Background. In this story, the other June is a bully. A bully is someone who is regularly cruel and bosses others around, especially smaller or weaker people. June tries to find a way to put a stop to the bullying. Be good, be good, my Junie, my mother sang as she combed my hair. It's just you and me alone in the world, my darling. We have enough troubles, so keep yourself out of fighting and bad stuff. People can be mean, but don't respond. Smile at the world, and the world will surely smile back. My mother was April, and my grandmother had been May. I was June. And someday, said my mother, you'll have a daughter of your own. What will you name her? January, I'd yell when I was a little. February, no, November, my mother laughed. She had little emerald eyes that warmed me like the sun. Every day when I went to school, she went to work. Sometimes. I stop what I'm doing, she said, and wonder what you're doing and if you need me. Now, Junie, if anyone ever bothers you, I walk away, run away, come on home as fast as I can, I recited. Yes, you just bring me your trouble because I'm here on this earth to love you and take care of you. I was safe with her, still. Sometimes I woke up at night and imagined I heard robbers, thieves, and murderers creeping up the stairs slowly towards my bed. I stuffed my hand in, into my mouth. If I screamed and woke her, she'd be tired at work tomorrow. The robbers and thieves filled the warm darkness and slipped across the floor. Rigid under the covers, I stared and bit my knuckles and never knew when I fell asleep again. I wanted to be rich, to take care of my mother. She worked too hard. Someday, I said, I'll buy you a real house and you'll never work in a pot factory again. Such delicious plans, she said, checking to see if the windows were locked. Do you have your key? I lifted it from the chain around my neck. And you'll come right home from school and, I won't light fires or let strangers into the house, I finished for her. I know, I'm just your old worrywart mother, she kissed me, but you are my June, the only June. In other words, June's mother tells her to be good and not to respond to people who are mean to her. June's mother also encourages June to always come to her for help. June feels safe with her mother most of the time. But you are my June, the only June. She was wrong. There was another June. I met her at the pool the first day of swimming class at the community center. What's your name? She had a deep growling voice. June, what's yours? She stared at me. June, we have the same name. No, we don't. June is my name. I don't give you permission to use it. Your name is Fish Eyes. She pinched me hard. Got it, Fish Eyes. The next Tuesday, the other June asked, What's your name? June. Wrong. Your name is Fish Eyes. June. Fish Eyes, stupid. She shoved me in the pool. The swim teacher called, No one in the water yet. Later, in the locker room, I dressed quickly. The other June pulled on her jeans. You guys see Fish Eye's bathing suit? Her mother found it in a trash can. She did not. The other June grabbed my fingers and twisted. Poor little stupid Fish Eyes is crying. Oh, boo hoo. In other words, one day, June meets another girl named June at swimming lessons. The other June is a bully. After that, everyone called me Fish Eyes. And every Tuesday, there was also the other June. In the water, she swam alongside me, knocking into me. In the locker room, she stepped on my feet, pinched my arms, and hid my shirt. She was shorter than I was, but heavier. 
with square hands. If I met her outside, she'd walk alongside me, smiling a friendly smile. Oh, well, if it isn't fish eyes. Then she'd punch me. I didn't know what to do about her. She was training me like a dog. After a few weeks of this, she only had to say, I'm gonna get you, fish eyes, for my heart to sink down into my stomach. My eyes, my arms were covered with bruises. When my mother noticed, I made up a story about tripping on the sidewalk. My weeks were no longer Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on. Tuesday was awful day. Wednesday was bad day. The Tuesday bad feelings were still there. Thursday was better day, and Friday was safe day. Saturday was good day, but Sunday was too soon day. And Monday, oh, Monday was nothing but the day before awful day. I tried to slow down time, especially on the weekends. I did everything with my mother. Aw, sweetie, go play with your friends. No, I'd rather be with you. I wouldn't listen to the radio. They were always telling you the date and time. I did special magic things to keep the day from going away. But always, I woke up to the day before Tuesday. And always, no matter how many times I counted 25 cracks in the ceiling, Monday disappeared, and once again, it was Tuesday. The other June got bored calling me fish eyes. Buffalo brain came next, and then turkey nose. In other words, every Tuesday, the other June bullies the narrator and even gets other kids to join in. June doesn't tell her mother what is happening. June begins to dread and hate Tuesdays because of the bullying. Now, at night, it wasn't robbers in my room, but the other June, coming to torment me. When I finally fell asleep, I dreamed of kicking and punching her. In the morning, I remembered my dreams and felt brave. And then, I remembered what my mother had taught me. Be good, be good. It's just us alone in the world. Oh, but if it weren't, if my father wasn't long gone, if we'd had someone else to fall back on, oh, then I would have punched the other June with a happy heart. I would have bitten her like the dog she had made of me. One night, when my mother came home from work, she said, Junie, listen to this. We're moving. Alaska, I thought, Florida, Arizona, someplace far away and wonderful, someplace without the other June. Wait till you hear this deal. We are going to be caretakers for an eight-family apartment building at 56 Blue Hill Street. We don't do any of the heavy work. If someone has a problem, she comes to us and we either take care of it or call the janitor for service. And for that little bit of work, we get to live rent-free. She swept me around in a dance. Okay? You like it? So, not anywhere else. All the same, maybe too far to go to swimming class? Can we move today? Sweetie, we've got to pack. Do a thousand things in six weeks, Saturday the 15th. It was the Saturday after the last day of swimming class. In other words, June feels scared all the time, but in her dreams, she fights against the bully. June's mother tells her they're moving, and June wants to leave immediately. Soon we had boxes lying everywhere, bit by bit. We cleared the rooms. On the calendar, my mother marked off the days until we moved, but the only days I thought about were Tuesdays awful days. Nothing else was real except the fast passing of time moving towards each Tuesday. Away from Tuesday, towards Tuesday. And it seemed to me that this would go on forever and I would be forever trapped by the pool the other June. 
whispering buffalo brain, fish eyes, turkey nose, while she was while she ground her elbow into my side. And then it ended. It was the last day of swimming class. We had all passed our tests. And now, our swimming instructor, our swimming teacher said, all of you are ready for the advanced class, which starts in just one month. Please sign up before you leave. Everyone but me crowded around. I went to the locker room and quickly pulled on my clothes. The other June burst through the door just as I was leaving. Goodbye, I yelled. Good riddance to bad trash. Before she could pinch me again, I ran past her and then ran all the way home. Later, my mother looked at my swimming class diploma. Isn't this wonderful? You might turn into an Olympic swimmer. I don't want to take lessons anymore, any more lessons. But it's great to be a good swimmer. Then, looking at my face, she said, no, don't worry about it. In other words, finally June's swimming class ends and she leaves the other June behind. The next morning, I woke up hungry for the first time in weeks. No more bad days and awful days. No more Tuesdays of the other June. In the kitchen, I made hot cocoa to go with my mother's corn muffins. I said, stirring the cocoa, it's my favorite day. Since when? Since this morning, I turned on the radio so I could hear the announcer tell the time, the temperature, and the day. Saturday was moving day. Tilly said, hello, you must be June. She shook my hand. She was a friend of my mother's from work. She wore big hoop earrings and a skirt as dazzling as a rainbow. She and John came to help us move. John shouted cheerfully at me, so you're moving. He was an enormous man with a face covered with little brown bumps. You looking at my moles? He shouted. Don't worry, they don't bite. Ha <laughs> ha. Behind him came my mother and Tilly balancing a dresser between them. The night before, we had loaded our car until there was barely any room for the two of us. But it was only when we were in the car and leaving that I understood we were truly going to live somewhere else. Tilly's truck followed our car. Our old car wheezed up a long steep hill, Blue Hill Street. I looked around trying to see everything. My mother drove over the crest of the hill and now, ta-da, our new home. Which house? I looked out the window and what I saw was the other June. She was lounging back on her elbows, legs outspread, chewing gum. I slid down into the seat, but I was sure she had seen me. My mother parked next to a big white building. She leaned forward. See that window? That's our living room window. And that one? That's your bedroom. We went into the house. In our new apartment, the wooden floors clicked under our shoes and my mother showed me everything. I followed her around in shock. Had I imagined seeing the other June? Maybe I'd seen another girl who looks like her, a double. Where do, you, where do you want this chair? John appeared in the doorway. We brought in boxes and bags and beds and stopped only to eat. Where do you want this chair? John appeared in the doorway. We brought in boxes and bags and beds and stopped only to eat. June's so quiet. Do you think she'll adjust all right? I heard Tilly say to my mother. Oh, definitely. She'll make a wonderful adjustment. She's just getting used to things. But I thought, I thought that if the other June lived on the same street as I did, I would never get used to things. In other words, June is so relieved about being away from the other June that she begins living normally again. She and her mother pack everything and friends help them move. Then June sees a bully outside her new home. She worries that she'll have to deal with the other June all the time now. That night, I slept in my own bed with my own pillow and blanket, but with floors that creaked strangely and walls with odd cracks. 
It was as if I were waiting for something. Monday, in Mr. Morrissey's class, I knew what I'd been waiting for. In that room, full of strange kids, there was one person I knew. She smiled her smile, raised her hand, and said, She can sit next to me, Mr. Morrissey. Very nice of you, June M. I sat down next to her. She pinched my arm. Good riddance to bad trash, she mocked. I was back in the Tuesday swimming class, only now it was worse, because every day would be awful day. The pinching had already started. Soon, I knew all the kids would be calling me fish eyes. The other June followed me around during recess that day, droning in my ear. You are my slave. I am your master. Say it. Say, yes, master. I pressed my lips together, but without hope. It wasn't, wasn't it only a matter of time before I said the hateful words? How was school? My mother said that night. Okay. The next morning, the other June was waiting for me. Did your mother get you that shirt in the garbage? She shoved me against a tree. Don't you talk, fish eyes? Grabbing my chin in her hands, she pried open my mouth. Oh, I thought you lost your tongue. When we went on to school, I sank down into my seat, my head on my arms. June T, are you all right? Mr. Morrissey asked. I nodded. The other June went to the pencil sharpener. Walking back, looking at me, she held three sharp pencils like Little, like three little knives. Someone knocked on the door. Mr. Morrissey went out into the hall. Paper planes burst into the air. Someone turned on a radio. And the other June, coming closer, smiled meanly. I remembered my dream of kicking and punching her. Then my mother spoke quickly in my ear. Don't fight back. She smiled at the world. Smile at the world, and the world will surely smile back. But... I had tried this and it hadn't worked. I couldn't run home. I had to stay in school where the other June was. Every day, all day, there would be the other June. She came down the aisle waving the pencils. A boy stood on his desk and bowed. My fans, he, he said, I greet you. She came closer, smiling her Tuesday smile. No, I whispered, no. I flew to my feet in front of the other June. No! It flew out of my mouth into her surprised face. The boy on the desk turned toward us. You said something, my fans? No. I said to the other June, no, 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 no more. I pushed away the hand that held the pencils. The other June's eyes opened, popped wide. It made me laugh. The boy on the desk laughed. And then the other kids were laughing too. No, I said again, no, 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 no. I leaned toward her, put my finger against her chest. Her, her cheeks turned red. She squawked something and stepped back. The door banged. The airplanes disappeared, and Mr. Morrissey walked to his desk. Okay, let's get back to work. All right, class. He stopped and looked at the other June. You too. What's going on? I tried it again, my finger against her chest, then the words, no more. And she stepped back another step. June M., Mr. Morrissey said. She stared at him with that big-eyed look. After a moment, she flopped down at her desk, making a loud slapping sound. Even Mr. Morrissey laughed, and sitting at my desk, Whirling my braids, I knew this was the last Tuesday of the other June. In other words, the teacher leaves the room, and the other June decides to bully June again. The narrator stands up and tells June no.